You can catch that full conversation between Teresa and Laura. Just search for the Our Land channel on YouTube. Let's bring our line opinion panel back for one more discussion this week. The University of New Mexico's Bureau of Business and Economic Research looked at data from 2019 from Cannon Air Force Base, including Melrose Air Force Range, Holloman Air Force Base, Cartland Air Force Base, and White Sands Missile Range. Now, those four installations are estimated to generate nearly $3 billion in labor income and a combined industrial output of more than $14 billion. Uh, Laura, do you get any idea the economic was, impact was that huge in the state? I mean, we know it's huge, but that's huge. Yeah, I mean, I think some mm -hmm. of the comparisons between um, that impact and other uh, manufacturing or even like oil and gas sector and others, I think that was what was very interesting when you see the magnitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that, that obviously I think, you know, it's clear that we have um, a lot of military installations here. We have a, a strong federal uh, presence. Um, between mm -hmm. military stations and the labs. And so I know that it generates some economic um, development and jobs, but um, certainly I wasn't aware of the full magnitude of it until this report. And I mm -hmm. think that uh, that means that it's, you know, it's pretty important that we have uh, solid relationships, I think, with our, uh, that our congressional delegation have good relationships with the administration in Washington and with the Department of Defense and others to make sure that we're not um, on the um, chopping block, so to speak, to right. for any kind of closures, because I think that will have a huge impact. BRAC is not a good word around here. Those four no. letters, B-R-A-C. Inez, the study also looked into the state's more than, and this is another stat that's interesting, more than 140,000 veterans who make up nearly 9% of our adult population. That's amazing. And veterans in our state, even more interestingly, earn on average 64% higher wages than non-veterans. Uh, something to be proud of? Or is that a gap we should... I don't know, be concerned about. I think that one of the reasons people join the military is so they can get, you know, their education paid for. Yep. And one of the things you learn in the service, you know, whatever your opinion is of having too big of a standing military or not, is you learn how to work, you learn how to take orders, and you learn how to complete tasks. So if you come back to work and you know those things, you're going yep. to do well. You know, my, my favorite cousin who did not finish college because he got busy working, mm -hmm is the most successful of all of our 18 first cousins and has stayed on at a local big company through like 50 layoffs because he learned how to work, how to ask questions and how to get the job done. So what I would think is if I was a non-veteran, which I am, but I would learn to work as well as the people who were in the military. I think a great work ethic will take you far. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, we've covered the positives and there's a lot of them uh, for the military presence here, but what about the costs? And what I mean by that, PFAS contamination from Cannon and Holloman, you know, jet fuel spills at Kirtland and the Superfund site at White Sands. These all created costs to public health, the environment, future generations burdened with cleanup costs and health impacts. Should these have been factors of the, for consideration as well? Well, I think they are now, mm -hmm. which is something that I think is important by making the public aware and, and elected officials of all these things because if you're not if you don't get involved and you don't, don't get told that that's going on and mm -hmm. being reported on then you don't have concerns you just see the 14 billion dollars i think that as we go forward and we've seen some monies appropriated to help do some of the cleanups and stuff right. i think there will be a greater pressure on our elected officials, particularly our congressional delegation. I mean, we don't, uh, with all due respect to the five of them, we don't have Pete Domenici mm -hmm. up there fighting our battles mm -hmm. to keep us going. And yes, we need to look at the environmental issues and the health issues, but what do we replace $14 billion with? Right. And I think that's, I think, people are concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Good point there. Hey, Laura, real quick, another significant cost, to stick with environment here, is pointed to uh, is climate change. The Department of Defense is the world's largest institutional user of petroleum, a lot of folks don't know that, and the single largest institutional producer of greenhouse gases as a consequence. Now, as a state that carries a larger burden than most when it comes to climate change, should we be more critical how we perceive military's contributions on that? Well, I think certainly just um, having the information about what the impacts are is important. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, the report that we looked at was an economic report. They were looking at the 
um, the potential uh, economic benefit of uh, military, military installations. But mm -hmm. a more comp comprehensive look at the environmental impacts would certainly be um, a, a useful corollary to that. Um, but I think that, you know, in terms of the direction that the military is going, that's something that the federal government has to um, look at and consider in its planning across the whole country. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we have impacts here, um, but I don't think they're necessarily disproportionate to what's happening in other states. So it's something that I think at the federal level, and certainly our delegation can um, can bring those issues up. But I know that over, I'd say the last 15 years, since I've been aware of sort of renewable development, certainly the military has started to look more at trying to be more sustainable in their practices and trying to incorporate more renewable energy. Um, but I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to continue to move forward. And as we, I mean, just given the geopolitical issues that we have, we, we need to have a strong military. And so it makes sense to um, think more sustainable long term mm -hmm. to address some of the climate change issues. Interesting point there. I know it's interesting. There was a story this week. Uh, the Navy is now working very hard on battery power, EV for submarines. It's, and they're going to get there. You know what I mean? And the military can lead on these things. It's, it, you know, it, they have an interesting position. Do you know where I'm driving at here to really affect change in a lot of ways? Well, when you think about the military, they helped desegregate the country yep. earlier than everybody else. And That's I right. think the Defense Department has identified climate change as one of the threats to the country and the world. Mm -hmm. So I, I do believe that they will act. Um, we have to get from petroleum to other ways to power vehicles. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they can do it fast, I bet you they will, yep. because they're always looking at what works and, and what's efficient. Thanks again to our line opinion panel, as always, this week. Our land senior producer, Laura Paskus, wrote extensively about this in her weekly newsletter. You can find a link and sign up for that on NMPBS.org. Now, our government and military leaders are watching closely as Russia continues its invasion of Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin Wednesday signed laws annexing parts of the country into Russian control in the latest escalation in that conflict. Now, we spoke to Ukrainian citizens here in New Mexico when the war began in February. And since, we've been in contact with a journalist and filmmaker who's been on the front lines. Patrick Hillsman has covered military conflicts for years and has family right here in New Mexico. Senior producer Lou DeVizio was lucky enough to sit down with him on a recent stop in Albuquerque to talk about the horrors and the triumphs he's witnessed during his time covering the war.